Hello and welcome uh, to the Open Power Foundation update. Uh, my name is James Kalina. I'm the executive director of the Open Power Foundation. Uh, we also have Mindy uh, Fremenek, who is the president of the Open Power Foundation today. And so you might be wondering uh, who I am. I'm actually the new face within the foundation. I recently joined um, and I have a background in open source. Uh, I previously co-founded uh, co a open source uh, cloud startup called Hyper.sh, where we were focused on container security. Uh, we actually co-created the Kata Container Project uh, in collaboration with Intel. Uh, I have worked extensively with the LF, actually, and the CNCF, uh, along with Google's uh, team at Kubernetes and uh, Docker. I have a former uh, Red Hatter uh, working in their product uh, OpenStack group as well as uh, worked in the telecommunication space uh, for AT&T, working on open source, uh, mostly focused on their OpenStack Telco cloud. I'm incredibly excited about uh, open power and uh, the foundation and what we have ahead, and I'm really excited to be helping uh, spearhead and, and lead uh, all the new initiatives that we want to get underway. And so a little bit about uh, open power. Uh, so. We are open innovation. We've been around since 2013. We have over 350 members, uh, over 100 innovations that we've done throughout the years. We have 150 plus open power uh, ready certified products, uh, as well as uh, 40 plus different uh, systems that we're currently shipping uh, uh, through our members uh, and a number of uh, collaborative innovations underway. So as you can see, the, uh, we have a wide swath of members that are part of the foundation, uh, ranging from research and HPC to software and integrations, uh, IO accelerators, uh, and boards and systems, uh, as well as all the way down to the chips. And so a little bit of history. So we did start in 2013, and, and we were founded uh, mostly around uh, getting more people collaborative uh, uh, contributions around the P9 chip from IBM. But uh, power has been around since the 90s. It's a very stable and uh, mature architecture, and uh, we've uh, 2019 was an actually a, a great year for us. Uh, it was a solid year. It was a year that set up 2020 and a solid foundation for us moving forward because we open sourced uh, our fully open sourced our ISA, our instruction set architecture. Uh, and this includes all the patent rights, which is very, uh, very useful for people who actually want to build new silicon. Uh, we actually open sourced a uh, reference design called the MicroWatt, which is a software implementation of the Power ISA, uh, as well as I think. Uh, really fundamental to our success in the future is, is that we moved into an open governance uh, and joined the Linux Foundation. So the MicroWatt is a soft core implementation of the Power ISA, and this was an FPGA targeted uh, implementation. Uh, it's fully open source. It's all up on GitHub. Uh, we had over 630 plus commits. Uh, this runs the ported uh, micro Python to it. They actually ported those uh, Zephyr uh, IoT OS, um, and they actually used fully open source GHDL uh, tools for synthesis. Um, and it was recently ported to the Chisel um, uh, programming language, and they called it the Chisel Watt. Uh, and also recently, this past month, we are able to now boot. Linux on this soft core, which is amazing. Uh, so a lot of great work coming out of the microwatt uh, soft core implementation and it allows people to, developers especially, to get involved, to understand how the power architecture works uh, and it's easy to get up and running. Uh, so a little bit talk about the actual open model around our ISA and why did we open source the, uh, the ISA itself? Uh, and this is mostly just for open innovation. Right, so that people can actually take the power architecture, uh, and you have full rights to, to create, distribute, license, and sell uh, power ISO cores. Uh, this is, you know, represented in, in software, or hardware, and integrated circuitry. Uh, uh, the, the key caveat here is that you, we require some compliance. 
uh, in order to maintain the uh, already mature software ecosystem that the power architecture has. Uh, so in order to get those patent rights, you need to make sure that your power ISA uh, chips are compliant with the uh, ISA itself. Uh, but you also have freedom of choice. Uh, so we actually have subsets uh, of the uh, architecture and you have this base subset that you typically start with, but then you can also add additional uh, implementation and, and compliant features on top of that. So it's really flexible on how you're going to consume and use uh, the power architecture in the ISO. And then by moving uh, under the uh, Linux Foundation and uh, having a uh, Open Power Foundation uh, work group uh, around the Power ISO itself, uh, we uh, allow for contributions from members and non-members alike. Uh, and the beauty about this is that uh, you can uh, um, do what you need uh, with the Power ISO uh, and work with a variety of different members who have complementary uh, needs as yours. Uh, and so how we think about computing uh, at the Open Power uh, Foundation is uh, moving forward as we see the Moore's Law is slowing or ending, uh, things are going to be moving towards more domain specific. We're going to start seeing uh, more custom chips, more custom CPU, more custom computing tailored towards the domain that they're uh, targeting. You're going to start seeing a lot more heterogeneous computing. This has already happened, and power architecture is a driver in this. But most importantly, I think you're going to start seeing open innovation. You're going to start seeing companies come together and member companies come together to actually uh, uh, deliver a true innovation around uh, an open ISA. And this is going to occur across the entire hardware stack. It's not going to just be limited to the silicon. It's going to be across accelerators and software and everything else. And so what my vision coming on uh, new to the Open Power Foundation is to really energize and to adopt a model that energizes our member companies to actually devote engineering resources uh, to help to uh, drive this ecosystem that we already have and to drive it towards an open collaborative co-development of this common uh, uh, power IP and cores and tools and software and systems. Um, it's not just about the ISO itself, but it's actually about getting IP out there for people to consume and to get a leg up. So how are we going to accelerate this? Well, we're going to adopt a slightly different working group structure than what we've typically had. Um, so we're going to focus around use cases uh, and industry segments. Um, we've currently have work groups that are mostly around specific technologies and those will still exist but and they will cut across all the different segments but really need to tease out that value proposition and the use cases so that all the member companies can identify where they sit and how they can contribute and the other thing by moving under the LF uh, the benefit here is is really being able to leverage all the knowledge that the Linux Foundation has in, in driving uh, really thriving ecosystems. And we'll be able to now partner and collaborate with all the other LF projects that will be able to consume the power architecture. And this includes uh, RISC-V and Chips Alliance, uh, which focus on other uh, open ISA as well as IP around hardware. Uh, we're going to be working with the uh, the AI group uh, as well as the networking and and uh, automotive grade Linux and Hyperledger and CNCF. All these groups, we potentially uh, now have the ability to collaborate and allow our member companies to see how they can leverage uh, these foundations and these projects as well. And the whole po point of this and the goal is to really create that feedback loop. If you look at it from a product perspective, we need uh, these groups to inform us on what the requirements are uh, so that we can uh, uh, adopt uh, the right feature sets uh, within the ISA itself uh, to uh, accelerate um, those type of workloads and, and to enhance the performance of those workloads. So the current Open Power Workgroup structure, as I was alluding to, is more around uh, uh, specific technologies, uh, but we have uh, a number of work groups already uh, set up, and they will still exist uh, moving forward um, around uh, you know physical science, machine learning, accelerated uh, uh, applications. Uh, we also have this Open Power Ready, which is a certification around uh, uh, products and solutions that come out that adhere to the Open Power uh, ISA. 
and and we have uh, accelerators and and uh, work groups focused on memory and and I/O, uh, as well as the system software that runs on top of power and all the different hardware and, and accelerators and, and networking interfaces that uh, uh, will be used in power systems. Where we want to be uh, is to have this set of common components, and this is I think foundational to us moving forward. Where we need to be able to think a couple steps ahead for our members uh, and develop this reference IP so that it de-risks their ability to adopt uh, the open power platform. Uh, and the goal here is that it's going to be based on segments and it's going to be based on use cases. Uh, so they will be able to pick this, uh, pick up this reference IP and customize it uh, based on the vertical that you're you're going after and it'll make it very easy and very intuitive for our member companies uh, to see where they fit in this landscape and who they can potentially work with who can they collaborate with uh, to accelerate their their solutions so the 2020 focus areas for the Open Power Foundation is around access uh, to these open power systems so that people, uh, developers, um, can actually get uh, get access and start developing and porting applications to the power architecture, start testing out their solutions, uh, doing um, regression testing if you're doing uh, uh, a CICD type pipelines. Um, and this is going to be through uh, standing up cloud resources as well as technology hubs at uh, universities um, and other member companies. Uh, we're going to start uh, establishing an actual training curriculum uh, around the, uh, open power so that people can understand what the, how the mechanics of it at the low level really work. Um, we're going to have a very engaged and productive technical working groups, and we're going to align around those use cases that are specific and, and, and valuable to our member companies. Uh, we're also going to be uh, having uh, our summits, our open power summits and industry events where we'll be uh, participants as well. Uh, we're going to have a number of meetups and workshops devoted towards developers and end users alike. Um, and then we're going to uh, showcase what uh, our members are doing through case studies and uh, uh, proof of concepts and demonstrating that business value of what power can actually deliver. And so it's a great time to engage with the open power community, and there's many ways to get involved. We have the technical steering committee. We have the work groups. We have we're going to have meetups and summits. Uh, you're going to be able to certify your your solutions. Uh, you're going to be able to market what you've done, and by con uh, collaborating with our marketing committee. But most importantly, I think by by getting engaged, you'll be able to define the technical direction of uh, the open power ISA. Uh, towards your needs and to help your business and your uh, community um, really take off and, and grow. So along those lines, we actually are announcing the Open Power Summit 2020. Uh, this is going to be in September. It's going to be a fully virtual event. Um, and you can start submitting your CFPs uh, on our website at openpowerfoundation.org. Um, and so I'm going to now open it up for questions. Thank you. Actually, before we get to questions, we actually have another announcement that we made earlier today. Uh, and uh, Mindy, if you wanted to talk through this. The big thing that we announced today is the A2I uh, power processor and open sourcing. Um, and this is a, uh, a pretty big uh, announcement for us. Uh, so uh, this is actually uh, one that was designed for the edge of network. Um, uh, uh, but it was actually used in a number of Blue Gene Q, uh, high performance computing uh, general purpose processing. Uh, systems. Uh, so it's about a decade old, but it's still uh, very uh, relevant and uh, incredibly high performant. Uh, so it's 64 bit. It's based on an older uh, Power ISA. Um, and this is where we're really looking for the community to get involved to bring it up to compliance with our 3.1 spec uh, of the ISA itself. Um, but it uh, has a four way SMT. Um, it's uh, in order execution, there's dynamic branching. Um, 
And also they've they've added uh, the Axie support as well. So they know that that's a community uh, thing that was was uh, actually asked for by the community. Um, so it's a it's a great uh, core and it's a great starting point for us to kind of build momentum around the power architecture, uh, making it easier. It's a full uh, FPGA environment uh, as well. So we can start testing this out on a number of different uh, boards. Um, to get you access and get you uh, start working in, on on customizing it to your needs and to your workloads. Um, so we're really excited about this announcement and uh, looking forward to connecting with the community and uh, bringing this uh, to the forefront. So thank you. So the first question that uh, we're seeing is, do you use a, a use case with a specific vertical that uses uh, open power in practice now? Um, so this is, uh, so mostly what power has been used in, in uh, enterprise and high performance uh, applications. Uh, so you think of like SAP HANA uh, uses power systems. Uh, but for uh, what we're trying to move forward uh, and, and to get community involvement is around ex expanding that scope into a number of different verticals and segments. Uh, and this uh, A2I core is actually going to help in that. 